Okay, uh, my name is Adrienne Montgomery, and we're here with Jamel Smith. And Jamel is an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor and authorized reseller. We're here with Caroline Walsh. She's the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Melissa Lord, who oversees the Shift Gear program for V Technologies on behalf of all the Intuit Pro Advisors and Solution Providers in the audience. Uh, if there's any questions regarding shipping software and QuickBooks, Melissa is your professional to uh, call upon at V Technologies. We're going to talk about the UPS World Ship and the FedEx Ship Manager. So, so thank you for joining us today. And uh, Jamel, I just would like you to kind of introduce yourself and uh, let the audience know where you're located and a little bit about yourself. Okay. My name is Jamel Smith. I'm an advanced uh, certified pro advisor, and I'm also an Intuit reseller. Um, the name of my firm is Bottom Line Tax Services. We're located um, outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and we work with clients on um, taxes, accounting, and most of our, our work is consulting on the QuickBooks products and then finding integrated solutions to, to help them uh, with any of their accounting or, or business management needs. Uh, well, V Technologies has been in business since um, 1989 um, as far as doing shipping uh, solutions. So we focus primarily, or our sole focus, I should say, is on shipping solutions. We have two products. We have our Starship product, which is a multi-carrier application, and then we have ShipGear, which is the middleware application. So Starship has been our flagship product as far as from the beginning, um, and then we added the ShipGear solution in early 2000s uh, to provide kind of an entry-level solution uh, whereby customers who were using either a FedEx Ship Manager or UPS World Ship could still get all the integration um, you know, into those applications. Uh, without having a full-blown multi-carrier manifesting solution. We started uh, the integration with QuickBooks um, in 2002, um, and we you know, went into the, um, their program uh, and received certification on our application um, connected to three flavors of QuickBooks, Pro, Premier, and Enterprise. So we wanted just to give you a little overview of the differences between um, the ShipGear solution and the QuickBooks Shipping Manager. And a couple of the things that you'll see here, um, right back, the ability to personalize the interface, uh, choice of documents, address validation. Let me just go into each of these a little bit more and kind of delve into some of the what, what this means to the customer. So from a right back perspective, once the, the uh, shipper processes the shipment, ship can, can write the information directly back to the QuickBooks document. Uh, so there's no manual pasting required in order to get all that information back. Um, ShipGear also allows you to define the information that gets written back into the QuickBooks document so that you can um, you know, have that information that you need, such as tracking numbers, uh, actual ship dates, some of the fields that you see here. And one of the coolest features about ShipGear is the idea that um, it comes with a default plug-and-play interface, so you can basically install it and start shipping right away. But many times our customers have specific requirements or special um, fields that they want to bring in. And we have an easy to use um, interface that allows you to personalize the field maps and translations that come into WorldShip. Um, in addition, you have access to custom fields that you've created in QuickBooks. Um, and this can, you know, be, these fields can end up getting printed on the label or uploaded as a reference field to UPS. Just helps automate the process even further. These, all these additional fields that we have um, or allow customers to bring in and translate um, can also be used for things like freight rules and email notifications. Um, those are the, the modules that we have where you can um, even further automate your shipping process by defining how and when the freight gets written back or those customized emails that we were talking about a little earlier. And then ShipGear gives you a way to access um, invoices, sales receipts, and sales orders, and gives you a way to easily switch between those. And we'll show you that during the, uh, the demo that we do. And then address validation uh, with the UPS World Ship solution that we'll be showing today um, does offer Zip Plus 4, which can help um, as far as from an accessorial fee perspective. If UPS, if you have an incorrect um, street address, UPS is definitely going to charge you to um, figure out what the right street address is and 
uh, go back and you know um, deliver it to that street address. So by having the zip plus four happen at the time of shipment definitely can save you on some of those unexpected accessorial fees. And then international shipping, um, by bringing information into UPS, can basically support all the international destinations that are um, supported by UPS. And then also um, be able to verify service availability to any one of those countries from within WorldShip. What you're looking at right now is the UPS WorldShip application. This is the software application that UPS provides to its customers free of charge. And um, we have ShipGear loaded here. The, the ShipGear application, because it's middleware, there's no real user interface to ShipGear itself. It's actually um, running in the tray down here. So you'll see the little icon. This is the ShipGear icon. And we've also um, added uh, the ShipGear icon right here to the WorldShip um, user interface so that you have easy access to it. So once you click on that, what you'll see is this import key box. And from here, you can actually scan in the um, order number. You can browse for it by putting a question mark in. Or you can just simply type it in. Um, let's just try 1102 and bring that in. And once I type in 1102, what ShipGear is going to do is to go out, access the information, and bring it up on screen. Let me just move this up a little bit. So here you'll see that we're grabbing all the ship to information associated to the order. Um, we're translating the ship via to the next day air shipment. Reference numbers are coming in. So here you'll see um, the fact that this is the order number and the PO number automatically coming in. Quantum View Notify, we're bringing in uh, the email address that's associated to the order. So this is what can really help customer service. The uh, Steve from Cars Pie Shop will be notified that his shipment's on the way. And then we can also do things like declared value, bring in the order total to make sure that the shipment is insured properly. And any of these fields that we have coming in uh, can also be modified through the uh, customized interface function within ShipGear. And we'll show you that. Um, shortly after we get done with the, the processing of these guys. So if I go back to, let me just move this import key here. Let's go back to the service tab. And I can add a couple of packages here. I'm going to process the shipment. And when they process the shipment in WorldShip, what's going to happen is WorldShip is going to produce the barcoded shipping label as it normally does. And then ShipGear is going to update the QuickBooks document in real time with the freight and shipment detail. So let's go into QuickBooks and take a look at that. So here we brought in the invoice 1102. This is the one that we just shipped against. You'll notice that we have um, the freight charge coming in as um, a freight reimbursement here, um, shipped on, the weight, the tracking information for those two packages. And then there's the freight charge that gets written back. So basically, once the shipper processes the shipment, um, we, ShipGear will update the invoice or order um, so that it's ready to go. The uh, second example that we wanted to go through with you guys um, is the idea of automating uh, the billing type or um, the bill to on the, uh, the shipment. Let me just show that to you, and then we'll show you how you can do that through customized interface. So um, I'm just going to bring in 1103. Um, we're going to bring this into WorldShip. You'll see that the ship to information, again, is coming over. And in this particular case, you'll see that bill transportation to is set to receiver here. So we have um, utilized fields within QuickBooks to define the billing type and translate this accord accordingly. So if you have customers that always say um, they want to be billed on their UPS number and they give you the UPS number, you can set that up uh, within ShipGear to automate that so the shipper doesn't have to remember it, nor does the order entry person have to enter it. So all the same things coming on in over here is a reference number, uh, the uh, order number, the PO number is coming in for reference. 
This also will allow the recipient to track on this reference number since it's being uploaded to UPS. Again, the quantum view notify. Your recipient is going to get notified that the package is on the way. Shipper basically doesn't have to do anything to get all this information into WorldShip. Basic idea here. So let's put a um, package in. Um, WorldShip can also read the weight directly from an electronic scale, process the shipment, and then ShipGear is going to um, write the information back. We go back into QuickBooks now. You'll see that the freight has been um, added. The, the information has been added for that package, the tracking information, but you'll notice that the freight here is zero. And that's because it was billed to the recipient. So we want to make sure that the recipient does not get charged twice on the package. How about um, markups? And what type of preferences do you have to set in QuickBooks? Um, well, Shipgear actually handles uh, markups on the, are you talking about the freight charges? Yes. Yeah, you can um, use Shipgear's freight rules um, to define how and when the freight gets written back. And you have quite a bit of flexibility with freight rules. You can do um, something such as uh, if the um, order total is greater than 500, uh, don't charge freight or don't write freight back. Um, so you can base the freight rules on QuickBooks fields. You can base them on WorldShip fields. Or you can just um, you know, set standard uh, you know, markup percentages like 15%. Um, above the, the list rate or however you want to do a markup or a discount on the freight. So that can all be done through shift gear um, so that when the freight gets written back um, into the order of the invoice, it's already uh, calculated appropriately based on how you want it to be calculated. Okay. And now will this integrate with the sales receipt yes. as well as the invoice? Orders, invoices, and sales receipts. And you can change, I happen to be shipping against invoices in this particular case. Okay. But let me just show you really quick. Let me minimize QuickBooks here and go into Ship Your Exchange. You'll see um, here my active connection. I'm connected to Rock Castle Construction. My document that I'm connected to is invoices. If I wanted to connect over to sales receipts, I could just select sales receipts and then Ship Your would be connecting to sales receipts. Okay, so at this time, could they, could it connect with both? Um, yes, I mean, you would be connected to one or the other, um, either invoices or sales receipts or sales orders um, at any given time. So, for instance, if I move over to sales receipts, I can hide this guy. And then if I did a question mark here, for instance, it's going to allow me to select a range I just click all because I'm not sure how many receipts we have, but it's going to give us all the sales receipts that you're looking at here. If I selected invoices, I would be browsing my invoices. So at any given okay. time, you're connected to one document type, but you have the ability to move between the three, actually four documents. Um, we also support a customer list. So if you have samples that you need to ship, that's one of the times when being able to access the QuickBooks customer list may be helpful, so you don't have to retype the information. Okay.